from the moment that I heard that uh, it was going to be made, I picked up the phone and said, I have to be a part of this. This has to be mine. Eloise is a part of heritage, and it's about New York, and there's something about New York that's also very romantic and of that, of that era. Everybody has a rambunctious part of them, so they can play off this little kid. She has this real way of knocking down authority, and you identify with this, everybody was six once. I mean it, Eloise. Very well. Very well. Nanny. 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 I loved them ever since the 50s when they first came out, and they were such a big hit and still are. Well, I've raised two little girls, and they loved the Eloise books, as did I. It's a book that I remember as a child because my parents got turned on to it when I was born, which is when the book was essentially released. Being a visual artist, it was, it was part of my vocabulary, part of my life. And luckily enough, here I am today making it a reality. I hoped that our production team would stay with the style of Eloise, and really, I believe they have. There's a lot of clues if you read the text and, and look at the pictures especially, you know, which are brilliant. Our director, Kevin Lima, wanted to follow the illustrations by Hilary Knight, which are magical, really to the letter if possible. He wears red garters and is boring, boring, boring. When we have our French lesson, he reads about La Petite Cousin de Marie in her jardin. Yeah, I spoke to Hillary from the very beginning and said, uh, told him how important it was that we be true to the source material. And he was absolutely thrilled that we were going to sort of replicate his visual world that he created. Kevin was great from the beginning because he wanted to really follow the, the look of the drawings, which he did. You know, they, they captured all that wonderfully. We've gone way out of our way to make this true to the source material. I had always imagined that this would be animated, but I do think what Kevin did is go one better. All these drawings literally came to life. that's playing Eloise is just wonderful. I love Sophia, and she was absolutely great. Sophia is very much like this little child. She is Eloise, the girl is the character. I mean, she really is just like Eloise in the real world. I mean, in fact, when we call cut, she's more like Eloise in real life than she is when the camera's rolling. It's remarkable, I never, I never ever thought we'd find, you know, that type of person that would be alive in our in our world. I know yeah. you will. I know you I don't will. Say yeah. I know you will. What do you, you say, say something you just remember? like that. No, I don't. I know I I'll don't. go get the script. All right. She's pretty much a lot like me, meaning in the ways that she doesn't like getting in trouble. She likes getting her way. Sometimes I have to have a temper fit. Because it... All right, all right, I'll, I'll do it. Well, it's quite remarkable that we actually, you know, went out looking for an actress and found Eloise. You rang? In the afternoon, I returned back to our suite. Eloise. And then there's the great Julie Andrews, who to all of us is a, sort of an icon, certainly to me. Like, I'm, I've never gotten excited about people before, but Julie Andrews is, she's so marvelous, and she's such a wonderful person. So that was a real thrill for me, doing that. And she is sort of the nanny from the Eloise book. She, I mean, she is the part. And even Mrs. Moppy's up, oh, what a lovely morning. Julie captured exactly what we wanted, and she added a little bit of her own. We couldn't have 
done better. She's been nannies before, but I think she's never been a nanny quite like this. I've done two nannies before, and I thought, well, maybe three times I'll get it right, you know? Mary Poppins, practically perfect in every way. And this one is um, totally different. She's uh, funny and, and kind of wacky. Oh! Nanny. Morning, Sir Wilkes. And she doesn't mind a beer occasionally, and uh, everything about her is just wonderfully loose and easy. <laughs> it was the chance to kind of go against type. She decided not to play what she's played in the past. Why don't we create sort of the anti-Mary Poppins? Nanny is very much sort of like the flip side of the nanny she's played in the past. And I loved that idea. Yes, that's more like it. No, I hit him again. Hit him harder. Go on, uppercut. Philip is the, the best example of absolutely translating the, uh, the tutor in his little scene. That's probably my favorite thing. I thought he was absolutely great. She's impossible, nanny. She's not as bad as all that. Turtle was superb. Great little dog. And a dog that looks like a cat. His name is Winnie. There's a wonderful class to the whole film, and the little scripts are just wonderful. And a couple of characters have been added, but very well. Call me Prunella. <laughs> so you really wouldn't know whether they were in the original books or not. Get ready. You don't want to... Well, Molly uh, and, and the mother particularly are really right out of the book. I mean, as though they plucked one of those drawings and brought her to life. The mother's hilarious. You know Eloise. Excuse me. It would be my pleasure. With exterior characters who try to retain that feeling of whimsy and um, the child's view of, of an adult world. And then later on, it was Kevin's idea to have me do some new drawings, which I did. And then it segued into what ended up as my little cameo. That was, that was great, because I created new art for that. I think tone is probably the most important thing that we're trying to achieve here, because it is, in many ways, not the real world. So how do we ride that line of making it feel like it could exist in the world and making it, you know, pushing, pushing the edge a little bit? So we're constantly doing many takes, trying to find the right level of performance. Do we push it too far? Does it get too big? Well, let's pull it back a little bit and let's make it a little bit more real. So we have a lot of material, you know, base material to play with. No, 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 Eloise. She's impossible, Nanny. When you're trying to find a character, you say, now, do I go all the way out? And I decided that the only thing I could do with Nanny was to go just completely as far as I could go. I really couldn't guess. I really couldn't guess. Oh, I really couldn't guess. Oh, I really couldn't guess. But... And I remembered a... Uh, 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 an illustration, and there's a picture of Mr. Salamone bowing, and he has a nice smile. When he, and, and you go back to those, uh, the, the, those wonderful little illustrations, and they give you sort of like a, a way in, uh, a sort of a, a bearing. It's a heightened style of the world that we'll recognize of a time gone by, yet it's present day. Because, you know, there's only so much you can draw from the book, and it's great material, but then you have to take it from there. It, the plaza is a perfect setting for a little kid. All of that is a great playground for this kid. I think that Kevin did an incredible job of translating what were black and white drawings into the, this vast lobby. Well, the set that we're working in is marvelously recreated, so we'll really get a feeling of the great hotel. I mean, the plaza lobby that we've made is a big set, and it's, it was a challenge, definitely. The fact that it is its age, I mean, everything was incredibly built in that period. The architectural details are incredible, fun to draw. The first thing that Kevin and I did was go to the plaza. As I'm standing in the middle of the plaza lobby going, oh my god, I have to actually recreate this make it 
as the book, because in the book there's things that don't do just they do not exist in the lobby, like the stuff behind the front desk. There's a screen and make it look this grand. Actually, we built the Plaza Hotel at its heyday. We're sort of going back in time and building it, you know, as it was probably in the 50s when the books were written. So we've changed a lot of things. It doesn't look exactly the way it is, but it looks pretty much like the way it was and very much like the way Hillary drew it. We more or less looked at the book and some historic photographs of the plaza. So it's sort of recreating the plaza and it's kind of adjusting the plaza to suit our needs in terms of the look of the doors and where the front desk is and, and so on. It's all the halls, the, um, the corridors of the Plaza Hotel, the grand suite that Nanny and Eloise live in. I can't wait for people who've been to the plaza and know New York you know, will be able to go, oh my gosh, that, and oh, you know, it's amazing. The movies, the magic of the movies. <laughs> But the plaza are very much involved, a very friendly one, one of the directors there. And Eloise, for them, is a very important part of their business. She is a vital part of that hotel. If you ever go to where the painting is, inevitably there will be a mother and her little daughter and sometimes little boys going and visiting Eloise. And the staff is very well schooled. I mean, if if someone goes up to the desk and said, where is Eloise? They produce a pair of little Mary Janes. And it's, it's, it's a very important part of the plaza, and it's part of the history of it. I have my very own room. The plaza is the only hotel in New York that allows you to have a turtle. I think one of the most recognizable images from the book is probably her sitting on her bed in her bedroom. And, um... We decided to replicate that down to the, the tiniest of details. So if you look around her room, you can actually see that there's an elephant on the shelf, that there's a ball that has a little antenna sticking out of it. Every single detail is replicated in the set. Well, that was really looking very carefully at the book and the illustrations that Hillary had done um, to recreate exactly that. So we actually built her bed and built her shelves in the, the same geography as the book. But I think for me as the designer to, to do the room and to, to capture her, specifically her bedroom, to capture the essence of Eloise with the set dressing and everything and, and what material makes up her curtains that captures the essence of this terrific and terrifying little girl. So it's sort of just feeling like, well, what does Eloise feel like? How would Eloise do her room? We also decided to use, as it refers to Eloise, the color palette is mostly in pinks. Because the books are black and white and pink, or black and white and yellow, so what we bring is just a little bit more texture to it, a little bit of depth um, and color. Chris and I worked really closely on a lot of the colors. This is a very designed show in that way. We really want the wardrobe to work with the sets and not to blend too much. As we evolved, I tried to assign a color to each specific character. So Mr. Salamone is always in his pinstripe navy suit. Ms. Thompson's always in her royalish blue pinstripe suit with the rough collar. We tried to bring out um, certain exaggerated features that could give a little bit more of a cartoon-like element to the, to the different people in the cast. <gasps> Morning, Sir Wilkes. Morning, Nanny. And, I mean, Nanny's got these wonderful sort of droopish, sloping shoulders, and she very seldom crosses her legs because of her big backside, and she doesn't sort of sit very gracefully or anything like that. We did put a padding on her, her, her bottom because uh, she's actually very fit and um, Nanny is slightly less fit. So we just wanted to give a little bit more of this kind of shape and we needed to add something to the posterior. It couldn't have been easy for this absolutely beautiful woman 
to add on Botto, but she did a terrific job. It's really quite a treat at the end of the day to get out of this wig and uh, out of all the wonderful costume that makes me look like Nanny and say, oh, I clean up really rather well. <laughs> It's really the essence of Eloise and her life at the Plaza Hotel. I love you. I love you too. I think the reason for the longevity of Eloise, when you consider it goes way back to 1955, is partly that it, it, does, it transcends period. It's very few subjects that have spanned the generations and been around that long. So it's a very important part of really American history of kids growing up and it's really the third generation now who's sort of reading it and again with their grandchildren. So it's a fabulous subject. And it's, it's a fascinating thing to see this pass from one group to another. And they're very loyal fans. You know, I, I think there's always some anxiety when you take a classic piece of literature and turn it into a film. But I'm hoping, because I love the material so much, that that love will come across. And even if it's not exactly like the book at every turn, that it holds the spirit of the book. And that the audiences who, who love this material won't be disappointed. And those who don't know the material will be overjoyed with discovering something new. I think, actually, that Kay would have approved of this, which is a very big statement. I absolutely love the plaza. Hello, I'm Hilary Knight, Eloise's artist. Almost 50 years ago, in a room in the Plaza Hotel, I met the author Kay Thompson. We began work immediately on a book that turned out to be Eloise. So here we are in the Plaza, practically the same room, and now I'm about to give you a few tips on how to draw your own Eloise. In order to draw Eloise, you need these essential ingredients. There are four elements in black and red. Number one, some call this incredible mass snizzery. You might find it lurking under your bed some night, but it is actually Eloise's hair. Number two, two black bars. They end up as suspenders holding up her skirt. Number three, here seen as a black box, but in actuality, these are pleats. Very important. Can go either from left to right or right to left. Number four, topping everything off, is her hair ribbon. Slightly devilish. Points, very important. Next, her magnificent limbs. Supporting Eloise are her patent leather shoes, sometimes found under her bed in the hallway or at the front desk. Just check with a concierge and he'll tell you the same thing. One of Eloise's features is her stomach, and she's proud of it because it involves a lot of things from room service that resulted in her magnificent stomach. Arms akimbo. Now, when you're doing Eloise, it's always a good idea to keep these words in mind. Sly, inquisitive, nimble, and let's not forget attitude. Eloise is loaded with attitude. Now right here, she is probably checking on what's going on in the next room. Perhaps looking for Weenie and Skipperdy. Perhaps looking for Nanny. Then at the very bottom are some shadows, which is what anchors Eloise to the ground, if that's possible. Finally, we get down to the 